Hi oh guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Jacob Tab. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about Google IDX Editor, so which is a replicate of uh, Visual Studio Code, but it's online. And Google did a lot of cool stuff with it, so let's take a look. Um, so if you want to access IDX, uh, it's totally free. You just go to idx.google.com, uh, so you'll be able to really just access it. Um, by uh, logging into your Google account. So uh, you can pick different projects like Python projects. Uh, if you can create a Java, you can search for Java and you'll be able to create a, a Java Spring project. Um, this is API service uh, Spring Boot. Um, and also you can create a Node.js project, which is super cool. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna demo how to create application in Java and how to create application using Flask, but also it's gonna be integrated with your favorite AI coder like Ader or Clang. So let's get started. So if you want to um, create a Java application, as I said earlier, so just go to select all templates, search for Java, and click that, and you'll be able to um, really quickly uh, just click next, and you should be able to spin up a similar Spring Boot project like this one. And uh, you can see, uh, basically, you create a, a folder called IDX and also some source folders, which is uh, normally people would uh, create once they build a, a Spring uh, Boot project. And you can see that in the demo location, they have uh, added the Hello World example, uh, and also in the uh, they have the ng and nix. So you create a different um, steps or schema that you can edit. Uh, so because the entire IDX is based on uh, Nix OS, which is a very cool Linux distribution. So if you're already familiar with uh, Nix OS, then uh, Google ID is a good fit for you. Um, if not, uh, it's very easy to ramp up as well. As you can see here, um, you can just define a schema. If you want to install packages like uh, Java, you can install Zulu 17, you can install Maven, Python, you can add more packages by clicking Add Packages. You can, let's say for example, you want to add Nix uh, engines. And then you were able to uh, just click the engines and then install it. So it's just as simple as that. So for a Java Spring Boot application, you can also uh, specify how you want to create a project. For uh, the default, they will basically do a Maven clean install. And it will, um, on the start, they basically do a port thir uh, 3000 and do a, a Maven Spring Boot. So that's it. So this is how it's actually easy to uh, create a Java Spring Boot project. And by default, it will spin up the server as well. You can see the on start, wrong server. So it's already started, you can see here, it's running on port 3000. So if you want to access it uh, publicly uh, on your browser, uh, you can just go to the uh, IDX sector um, on the uh, IDX. So basically they have a different sector uh, specific for IDX. So you can just uh, check the uh, backend ports. So you see the 3000 is already spin up. Make sure you click this icon. So um, it allows you the public access and click the open external URL, right? So you can click that, you can see it basically says whole world. That's uh, your uh, code inside the uh, IDX workspace, right? So the hollow world is hollow world. You can see from here, hollow world. That's it. So you can add um, your um, preferred endpoints or projects following the instructions of the Java Spring Boot. It's very standard. So that's about it. So that's how easy you can create a Java Spring project in IDX. So next, we're gonna talk about how to create a project in Python Flex, and also how to add your favorite AI coder. So if you um, create a Python Flex, just go to the IDX, search for, um, you don't have to even search for it. It's on the front page, it's a Python Flask. Just click, and it will ask you to create an API server or a web server. Just uh, pick the one that you want. So in this case, we'll do the API server. And once it's created, it will spin up a project similar to this one. And it will create an IDX folder for uh, IDX schema, the packages and the environment, and all these different uh, workspace startup script. And also, it will create a virtual environment. And um, because you can see from the startup install script here, it basically create a virtual environment once um, you install this workspace. Uh, so also uh, spin up the virtual environment and install all the dependencies uh, and also spin up a dev server. Uh, that's by default. So if you click the dev server, you can see it's actually spin up a Flask um, application um, just on this virtual environment we just created. If you want to add custom packages, you can just uh, use pip install 
once you actually uh, in this virtual environment, uh, you can do a pip install, or if you want to add system level packages, you can go to the schema and click add packages, like the Java. All right, it's very similar uh, schema setup. So for this uh, demo, basically, um, you can see that um, we have uh, this um, sample application spin up on uh, port uh, from the uh, environment. The default is on 3000, but they spin up on uh, 5000. So you can see that they're basically passing the virtual environment. Uh, they're passing from this um, uh, dev server, or maybe it's dev server, but somewhere anyway. So basically, it's a spin up on 5000. So and then in this uh, IDX uh, section, you can see it's on 5000 port. Then just click uh, the open external. So you will be able to see that it's running on the uh, 5000 and basically the traffic is routed to the 5000 local host of the IDX workspace. So that's how easy it is to create a Flux project in IDX. So the next one to talk about is how to integrate your favorite AI coder like Aether or Climb. And if you uh, uh, fluent with Aether, basically it's a pip or a Python package. So you can um, just install it by just doing the pip install. All right, the pip install, as usually install your local uh, registered code, and you do like um, Aether, right, Aether chat. So you'll be able to install that. And uh, we already installed it. Um, so we can just uh, check the pip list and grip Aether. So you can see that it is installed. So to use it, uh, just uh, copy this um, script. So first we export uh, a um, LLM URL. Um, you can use Olama or Sonat, uh, whatever Aether supports. So in this case, we spin up Olama on Kaggle. We have a separate tutorial to show you how to use the free GPUs uh, for Kaggle and also to how to build the Olama service for free using the Kego GPU. Feel free to check that out or link the description and uh, YouTube link in this video description. And let's go back to the workspace and let's copy this um, base, your, uh, base API, so which is uh, the one that we already spin up on Kego. And after that, uh, we we'll basically just uh, select the model that's available, that's already downloaded in Olama. So in this case, it would be Q2.5 Coder 14B. And we just hit Enter. So you can see Aether is already uh, taking the uh, service. So, and we don't want to create a Git repo for this demo. So we click Set No. And then basically we just um, say, okay, we'll create a Minesweeper game using Python that runs in terminal, right? Let's hit enter. So you can see that it is working with the uh, Kego GPU Olama service that we already set up. With that, we want to test the um, code written by Aether. So let's go back to uh, the folder. Uh, you can see that it's created under the root folder, and we just do a quick test using pilots with Python MySweeper. You can see uh, it's working, and then we say, okay, I want to do some test, and one, one, game over. So, okay, let's run that again. Just uh, let's say zero and zero. You can see it's actually working, right? So one and one, it's working. Nine and nine, okay, it's good. Now let's just exit the program so you can see that um, it's written very nicely. And um, so this is basically everything is function in terminal. So if you ever want to um, create a web page or uh, HTML page, uh, you might uh, not be able to run inside this uh, workspace, but how to uh, make it accessible. So uh, you want to use Python server. Uh, 
not the Nginx or other uh, frameworks because uh, I don't think IDX uh, really supports that because it's on beta. So uh, just use Python HTTP server, it should work. Uh, for this example, uh, we just use the Python HTTP server and we want to point the directory to a uh, root folder and we create a www directory. So you can see there's an index HTML file here. So we want to uh, run that. So just click uh, paste this command. It will um, basically pointing the traffic to this folder and you can see we just create a hollow world uh, inside um, this folder, right, inside the HTML. And after the HTTP server of Python is spin up, you can see on the ADX section, the port is up. So make sure it's public, then click external, open external link. You see that's actually working, right? So that's how you um, access the public HTML or those web pages within ADX. So, and if you want to use other AI coder like client, um, it's very similar to Visual Studio. You can install it from the extension section. Uh, just uh, click the extension and search for client, which you already installed. So, and then just click install, uh, you will be able to uh, install client. And if you want to use it, it's the same as you should use on Visual Studio code. Uh, just click the client uh, and then basically you can see that's already working, already tested it. So you can just search for uh, some questions like, uh, we can go to settings, right? We still use the same Olama uh, GPU service that we already spin up on Kaggle. And we select the model as Olama 3.2 extra context because we customize it to take more context because it's a coding question. And then that's it. So just click down and then start ask your questions. Like create a Minesweeper game using uh, Python, right? And then just hit enter. So, um, it, a client will actually just work with the uh, Alama Kaggle GPU service, so we'll be able to um, complete the code. So you can see that's um, already working. The task is to create a Minesweeper game using Python, right? And need to analyze the file structure and determine which tools are relevant for this task. So, and then you, uh, this is basically the exact the same way you would use client on your local Visual Studio. So, yeah, and that's it. So. Hopefully, um, this is helpful. And basically, in this demo, we demoed how to use Google EdX for uh, Java applications and Python applications with um, integration of AI Coder. And that's it. Hopefully, you like this video. If you do feel it's helpful, please subscribe, like, or comment if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. See you in the next one.